Hello, this is Eloisa with Math Leopard. Today we are going to look at the music of the outer spheres of antiquity, Jupiter and Saturn, along with a more recently discovered centaur, Chiron. The first planet we will look at is Jupiter, whose distance from the Sun is over five times farther than the Earth. As you may recall from my analysis of the music of the inner spheres, the periodicity of each was related to the Earth by factors of the golden ratio phi. Recall that the golden ratio has a value of quantity 1 plus the square root of 5 all over 2. In this video, I would like to illustrate the sacred nature of phi. To begin with, let's consider the sequence of numbers 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, etc., known as the Fibonacci sequence in the West. We annotate each element of the sequence with a capital F and a subscript corresponding to its position within the sequence. Not everyone begins this sequence with zero, so in deference, I'll begin numbering the entries with a zero subscript. Hence, capital F sub zero in my sequence is zero. Capital F sub one is one. Capital F sub two, which is the sum of zero and one, is one. Capital F sub three, being the sum of one and one, is two. Capital F sub 4, being the sum of 1 and 2, is 3. Capital F sub 5, sums 2 and 3, yielding 5. Capital F sub 6, sums 3 and 5 to get 8. Capital F sub 7, sums 5 and 8, yielding 13. Capital F sub 8, being the sum of 8 and 13, is 21. Capital F sub 9, summing 13 and 21, is 34. Capital F sub 10, adding 21 to 34, is 55 and capital F sub 11 has sum 34 plus 55, or 89. This sequence is infinite, and each subsequent term is the sum of the two preceding it. You may also know that the quotient of subsequent terms of this sequence converge to the golden ratio. Speaking of, let's consider something truly fascinating about the exponentiation of phi. We recall that phi to the first power has value 1 plus the square root of 5 all over 2. I'm going to write this simply as the constant 0 plus 1 times the golden ratio phi. Now let's consider phi squared. If I square the numerator 1 plus the square root of 5, I get the sum 6 plus twice the square root of 5. And if I square the denominator 2, I arrive at 4. Given that 6 is 2 greater than 4, I can factor out a constant 1 from the fraction, leaving me with a single multiple of phi when reduced. Now subsequent powers of phi can be calculated using the simplified form of phi squared. Phi cubed is simply phi times phi squared, or phi times the quantity 1 plus phi. Distributing and using the fact once again that phi squared is 1 plus phi, we get that phi cubed is 1 plus twice phi. Phi to the fourth is phi times phi cubed, or phi times 1 plus twice phi, which results in the sum 2 plus 3 times phi. Using a similar approach to subsequent powers of phi, we note that phi to the fifth, which is phi times the simplified result of phi to the fourth, yields 3 plus 5 phi. Phi to the sixth ends up being 5 plus 8 phi, and phi to the seventh results in 8 plus 13 phi. We note that the constant terms in each power of phi, seen here in blue, are simply the Fibonacci numbers beginning with the zeroth entry, f sub zero whereas the coefficients of phi, seen here in purple, are also the Fibonacci sequence beginning with the first term, f sub 1. We can conclude that the nth power of the golden ratio phi is really the sum of the n minus first Fibonacci number and the nth Fibonacci number times phi. All of this leads us back to our graphical derivation of phi from my last video, in which we created a golden rectangle of base length 1 and width length phi. Now I'd like to take these same dimensions and create an isosceles triangle whose base has length 1 and whose sides have length phi. This is a golden triangle and is the triangle which, when pointing to the five directions, creates a perfect pentagram. We note that each triangle's base has length 1 and its side length is phi, yet the sum of 1 and phi, as we've seen in our analysis, is phi squared. Now let's traverse the whole length of the pentagram. We have phi plus 1 plus phi, or 1 plus twice phi, which is equivalent to phi cubed. What more mysteries are contained in this figure for you to discover? Before we move on, it's important to note that Jupiter lies on the right side of the pentagram, whereas Saturn lies on its left. This gives an inference as to their nature when viewed in the Pythagorean sense. Returning to our analysis of Jupiter, we recall that frequency is given in cycles per seconds, or hertz. 
but as before the period of jupiter is related to that of the earth by a factor of v to the fifth power the number of classical elements so when we multiply the period of the earth by v to the fifth we approximate four million three hundred and thirty two thousand five hundred and eighty nine days converting from days into hours minutes and then seconds reducing the units of days hours and minutes leaves us with the frequency for jupiter of one cycle three hundred and seventy four million three hundred and thirty five thousand six hundred and eighty nine point six seconds or two times ten to the minus ninth hertz in order for this to reach audible frequency we need to raise it up thirty six octaves hence we multiply through by two to the thirty sixth power what results is a frequency of 183.577-1438 hertz, approximately an F sharp. Now let's consider the orbital frequency of Saturn, which lies on the left-hand side of the pentagram. It's interesting to note that our relationship to the period of Saturn is approximated by phi to the seventh power. The planet number of Saturn as measured from the Earth in antiquity. And even today, Saturday is the seventh day of our week. Saturn's orbital period lasts 10,759.22 days, which when we convert into seconds by way of hours, minutes, and seconds, and reduce our units of days, hours, and minutes, leaves us with one cycle every 929,596,608 seconds, or 1 times 10 to the minus 9th hertz. This frequency must be raised 37 octaves to be heard. Hence, when we multiply through by 2 to the 37th power, we arrive at a frequency of 147.847-9507 hertz, approximately a D. The last heavenly object I will consider is Chiron. Chiron is a centaur captured from the Kuiper belt and thrust in between the orbits of both Saturn and Uranus. Although not recognized until my lifetime, it's interesting to note that this, quote, eighth planet is related in periodicity to the Earth by a factor of phi to the eighth power, and that period is one cycle every 50.39 years, translating into days, hours, minutes, and then seconds, and reducing the units of years, days, hours, and minutes gives us a frequency for Chiron of one cycle every 1,590,204,879 seconds, or 6.29 times 10 to the minus 10th hertz. In order to hear this, we need to raise it up 38 octaves. Hence, we multiply through by 2 to the 38th power, which gives us a frequency of 172.856,9134 hertz approximately an F. As each of these frequencies is experienced from Earth, their power comes from their harmonies with Ohm. The Ohm Jupiter fourth has a vibrational energy suited to personal growth in the realm of philosophy and higher education with an archetype of abundance and expansion. The Ohm Saturn Minor Second, with its melancholy nature, evokes the structure of tradition and the ability to endure our karma with grace. The Ohm Chiron Second is very soothing and magical. The archetype of the wounded healer in Chiron is linked to the transformation of the soul through alchemical divination. The interval of middle Chiron with high Chiron restores our energy field with vibrational healing. The final interval I'd like to cover is that of Sedna and Chiron. This interval, which combines the healing nature of Chiron with the quantum bilocation slash magical qualities of Sedna, is used in the ritual of healing at a distance, as seen in the practices of Reiki and Qigong.
Thanks for watching. I'll be posting the music of Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto soon. Please subscribe to be updated when it's posted. See you next time.